Our first step is to figure out what the magnitude of vector c is. So let's take a look at vector c, and we can see that the x component of vector c is equal to positive 3, and the y component is equal to positive 4. So starting at the origin, we would move along the x-axis a distance of positive 3, and then we would move up the positive y-axis a distance of 4. And then the magnitude of vector c is going to be this resultant vector right here. It basically forms the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We could say that the magnitude of c squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. If we simplify the right-hand side, we're going to have 9 plus 16, which is 25. And then to solve for the magnitude of c, we would just take the square root of both sides. We can see that the magnitude of c is equal to 5. Our next step is to set up a table showing the x and y components of vectors b and c. Now, for vector c, once again, we know the x and y components. They are respectively positive 3 and positive 4. Now, presently, we do not know the x component of vector b, nor do we know the y component, but we have some clues here. Because, for example, it says that the result when we add the two vectors together is a vector in the positive direction of the y-axis. So if we add a new row to our table, we could call this vector b plus vector c. Now the fact that that sum of the two vectors is another vector in the positive direction of the y-axis, well what that means is that the final x component is going to be zero. And we also know that the sum of vectors b plus c will have a magnitude equal to that of c. So what does that mean? Well, it means that since the x components are going to completely cancel out and go to zero, that means that the total y component has to equal five, because the only component that's left over is going to be that y component. So the sum has to equal five, which was the magnitude of c. Now we look at this table and we can see, looking in the x column, that bx plus three has to equal zero, and then if we look at the y column, we can see that by plus 4 has to equal 5. Now we can easily solve for the x and y components of vector b. We'll subtract 3 from both sides here. We can see that bx is equal to negative 3. And then subtract 4 from both sides of this. We see that the y component of vector b is equal to positive 1. So now to get the magnitude of vector b is pretty simple. We just pick an arbitrary point in space here. The x component is negative 3, so we're going to draw a vector going in the negative x direction that has a magnitude of 3 and then the y component is positive 1 so we'll go up the positive y axis and mark that with a length of 1 and our job is to find the magnitude the magnitude is the hypotenuse of this right triangle we can label that magnitude of vector b once again just use the Pythagorean theorem so we know the magnitude of vector b squared is equal to 3 squared plus 1 squared we can see that the magnitude of vector b squared is equal to 9 plus 1, which is 10, and then square root both sides, and you have the magnitude of vector b is equal to the square root of 10. And of course, we could punch that into a calculator, and we can see that that's approximately 3.2. So this indeed is the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it, but of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.